Good morning and welcome back to Coffee and Colorful Conversation. Welcome, welcome. I hope to see a lot of familiar faces on here today. I am broadcasting live on Instagram as well as Facebook today. So I'm going to be looking a little crazy trying to look into both cameras. I had a little moment of panic this morning. My Facebook Live button just completely disappeared. So it took me a minute to figure out how to find a way to go live. So that's why I pulled out my phone and then I said, why not go live on Instagram? I, I don't do that very often. So I'm including my coffee chat, hello Instagram, thank you Lux Color Lounge and Tina and T Dunn and all of you who are joining me on Instagram. So I always think the day before I'm going to come on here for my coffee chat, what's relevant right now? What am I experiencing in my career that I can share with someone else? And yesterday I kept looking at myself in the mirror and I got a recent haircut where I got a lot of um, more layered um, style that took away a lot of the bulk of the blonde pops on the ends of my hair. And I also got my regrowth touched up and when it was shampooed, I don't think they were as careful as they could be about taking the ends up and out of the way so that the retouch didn't muddy down the color. So my color has been driving me crazy and I actually made an appointment here in Florida to see a brand new colorist to get something done because it was driving me so crazy and I, I've been doing this 32 years. I have never, I attempted once to do my own color. I did some bathroom balayage when I was away at the beach and it did not go well. I just don't think I'm a perfectionist and I just don't think you can get everywhere you need to get and in the right places and protect the hair and all that. So I leave it up to the professionals myself. But because I'm having this anxiety of being in a new state and not having my person, I, I need a new dentist. I need someone to do my color. I have not done my brows since I've gotten here because everybody always takes too much off of my brows, so I've just been tweezing and they look awful. So I need someone to do my brows. I found a wonderful masseuse, I found a wonderful facial person and I've been enjoying that, but each step of getting that new person makes me realize more and more how important the little details are in those transactions. So back to my muddy hair. So um, last night I was like, wait a minute, I haven't done a Malibu treatment in a while and I'm probably going between all these different types of water. I was home in Philadelphia, I'm here in Florida, I'm on the beach. Maybe I just have a whole lot of crap on top of my hair and minerals from the water. Let me just do a quick Malibu treatment. So if you follow me on Instagram, you saw that I um, posted the picture of the Malibu, the blonde packet, it's the purple packet. So that's all I did to my hair and today's Instagram post, when I hang up from the coffee chat, I'm gonna be posting today's post and it's just the before and after of my hair before the Malibu and my hair after the Malibu. Now, when I'm on these coffee chats, my hair color never looks as light and bright as it does in person. So hopefully the picture on Instagram will show it off better, but everything just looked sad and muddy and just like, eh. I went, I had to go home for a funeral and, and so many people came up to me and said, when did you go dark? And I was like, oh, that was not my intention. I just got a haircut. So that is something that if you're not already doing it, Malibu treatments can make a huge impact on your hair color and make all the difference. And it's a small little thing. It's a five minute treatment with powder. A client can do it themselves in the shower. You can have an assistant do it in the salon. You don't have to add any more time to your day. And I say when I teach at the shows, I'm embarrassed that I didn't look into Malibu sooner. I had seen people talk about it and I was like, oh, it's just another you know trend that is all hype, but it's really not. It really does make a huge difference on prepping the hair for color, on removing that dull, lifeless kind of look. So that is what spurred today's topic because looking for all these new people in my life and knowing all the little differences that I do and that I'm used to doing at my salon that I had for 30 years, I really believe you can be an average hairdresser and not even really be that great at your craft, 
But if you do the little details and you make somebody feel a certain way when they're with you, they'll be loyal to you. Like, unfortunately, most people do not know the difference between good and great hair. They know bad hair. Everybody knows when they've had something bad happen. But if you've never experienced that next level of wow, cut or color or some sort of hair service, you don't know what you don't know. Like there's women who've never ever had their hair done with the beach waves and they, you do it to them once and they're like, oh my gosh, I look like the girls in the magazine. How did you do that? And it's literally five curls of the wand and just pulling it down when it's a little bit hot to get the ends a little straighter. It's so simple to us, but we need to educate our clients and give them that option. I washed my hair on Friday and yesterday I forced myself to wash it because I needed the Malibu treatment, but I could have really gone another day. It had that beachy, lived in grit that I love when it's a little dirty. So clients don't know that and they wake up every morning and they wash their hair and they blow it dry and they curl it and then they complain that it's damaged. So educating them, they don't have to wash their hair every day. They're like, what, are you kidding me? Talk to them about dry shampoo. All those little things that we take for granted as professionals, people don't know, they just don't know. So everybody just give me a quick comment. Where are you tuning in from? You know, Give me something in the comments to let me know that you're here listening. I wanna go over, I wrote a list of 10 things that I think can make a big impact um, to make sure that, you know, I always go off on my ADD tangent. So I wanna make sure I stay focused and give you something to try on today. And it's all simple, no and low cost things that you can do. And don't say, well, my salon doesn't do that or my owner won't do that. You are the owner of your business. If you work on commission, if you are booth rental, if you rent a suite, if you're a sole proprietor, if you own a salon, anyone who works on a clientele as your job, you are the owner of your business. You own that little square space of yours, whether you're getting paid commission or you're renting, it's up to you what happens in that square. Who enters your space? Who keeps coming back to your space? That's all your responsibility. I don't wanna hear my owner this, my owner that. If you are blaming your owner and there's things that your owner is keeping you from, if the salon is filthy, dirty, they're not professional, everybody around you is not professional, get the hell out and get a new job and stop blaming everybody else because you are responsible for you and that's it. So number one, my biggest pet peeve, I see on the forums that you guys all know if you follow me, I spend way too much time more getting aggravated. Over and over and over, I see, how do I remove the stains on my client's skin? You know, I did a level four color and it's like black ink on her face. Guys, there's a thing called Hairline Protective Barrier Cream. Go get it. Over and over, I see people <clears throat> talking about the solution. Cigarette ashes, get a client who smokes to give you some of her ashes. That was like 1950 that people did that because they didn't have the tools that we have now. Wake up guys, putting cigarette ashes on your client's face is disgusting. Like if you came at me with cigarette ashes, I would never wanna see you again. Like that is disgusting. So don't go on these forums and ask, you know, what can I do to get it off? Don't get it on in the first place. It's so, so easy and preventable. My personal favorite, you guys all know I'm an independent educator. I am not tied to any manufacturer. I don't get paid to tell you about products that I use. I just share what I love. I discovered Aloxy a few years ago, Aloxy Barrier Cream. I squirt a little bit on my hand when I'm starting a client and I go like this with my finger to break it down so it's not like a big blob of white. And I literally just pull back the hair and I put it as close to the line of the hair. Look at my grays. I gotta find a hairdresser here. As close to the line of my gray as possible without putting it into the hair. All the way around the hairline, tips of the ears and the back of the neck. Takes 12 seconds. Jackson Carney, hello. I love that you're watching me from afar, you hottie. Miss you. 
So put the hairline cream on and then do your business. And then you can get right to that gray line and not miss any gray hairs and not worry about it staining their face. When you take them to the sink, lay them back in the sink, do not turn any water on. No hose is going on. Hands are dry, completely dry hands. Take your thumb, rub that hair with the color that's on the hair, rub it over onto the skin. You're making a swirly mess of black, blonde, black, whatever's on there. You're rubbing the actual existing color hard. Rub hard with your thumb. You're not gonna break anybody's face. Everybody's so gentle with it. Just big circles all the way around. Take a dry towel, dry, not wet. Wipe away all the excess that was on the skin. Turn your sink on. Use the highest pressure you have. Hit it right at the root line and push with your fingers back. Rinse all of that color and do the circles as you're doing it. It will be gone. Go back on this page when we're done our coffee chat on this Expert Color Solutions page. I have a quick video of my darkest client. She's Middle Eastern, she's, you know, a level three or four color, and it wipes right off. I have never, ever had a stain. I, I get crazy when I see people talk about that. So, hairline protector, dry circles, never have a stain again. Number two, we've all had that client that's the wiggler or the hunchback, that they're so humped that they can't get their neck all the way back in the sink, and we put towels underneath their butt and we put kitty boosters and whatever we can do to get them raised up and we still can't get the color rinsed from underneath their neck without it running down their back. So I discovered by doing Periscope years ago, um, one of my Periscope friends, Jennifer, created the Bid Buddy. It has been a godsend. I wish I thought of it before her. I talk about it all the time. I think I probably sell more of them than she does. So I believe her site is like Bid bib-buddy.com. I'd have just Google bib buddy and it'll come up, but it's a, um, the, the material of like a shampoo cape. It's water resistant and it's thick and nicely made and it has Velcro and it goes around the client's neck like a Superman cape. Like your Velcro is here and the cape goes down in the back and it's a long square and you put, you put it around their neck and then you put the actual cape into the sink. So when you're getting in there and you're rubbing and putting the high pressure water that you need to rinse all that color underneath, it's not going down the client's neck, it's going right into the sink. Amazing. There's another version of that if you're more of a disposable kind of person and you don't want to keep wiping down the bit buddy. I have like six of them, so I just keep rotating them and washing them and wiping them down. What I used before the bit buddy is called Neat Neck. N-E-A-T-N-E-K dot com. It's a plastic disposable version of the same exact thing. You have, there's two circles on the end of it and you have the client hook their fingers in it and they pull it forward to make it nice and snug on their neck. And then the back of the plastic goes into the sink and everything goes into the sink and not down your client's back. So wonderful additions to your salon. We literally had a woman that came to us for 10 years straight, every four weeks, Paula. She was one of our most loyal clients, but she was unfortunately in the humpback crew. She had a really humped neck. So no matter what we did prior to having the bib buddy, we didn't know about the bib buddy back then. No matter what we did, we soaked Paula. And one day she's wrote me this really nasty email and was like, I'm never coming back to your salon again. It was two things actually. I sent out a mass email and the email template in my software, at the end of the email, it said, we'll be expecting you. It was just like part of the thing, and I didn't even know it was in there. And I was asking her to attend something that I was doing for charity. It was like, come and support, you know, I was raising money for Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. So I was like, come and help us raise money, and uh, we hope to see you there. And then at the end, it said, we will be expecting you. And she said, how dare you? say that you'll be expecting me. That's so rude. And I was like, what is she talking about? And then I had to read the email and I said, oh my gosh, that was like a default thing on my email. So I quickly, of course, removed it and never used it again. But that's unbelievable. Like she came for 10 years, loved her hairdresser, loved her color, loved the salon. She left because she said, every time I come here, 
my neck and back get soaked and nobody seems to care. The only one that cares is Mary Beth. Mary Beth is the one that cut her hair. So she was saying like, no matter who did her color or who shampooed her, she was soaked in the back and nobody cared. Well, we didn't know. She never said anything. So clients will not say anything and then they'll tell everyone else. I came home, I was soaked down to my underwear, you know, they're, they're horrible at shampooing. Like, you don't know what you don't know. So pay attention to the details. Get yourself a neat neck, get yourself a bit buddy, whatever you need to do to guarantee that the client does not get wet. They're coming from work. They're coming, they're on their way to an event. They're coming in for a blowout and they're dressed to the nines. They don't want their underwear soaked when they're going to an event because we don't know that it's going down their back. Um, something that we've always done, but we're going to step up a little bit of a notch. We've always done a few drops of an oil and done a dry scalp massage on the client before we lay them back in the sink. That was something that most of us came from an Aveda background 20 some years ago. So Aveda kind of started that whole trend and we never let it go. A lot of people, once they leave Aveda, they stop doing that scalp massage, but it's most clients, if you ask them, will say that's their absolute favorite part of the visit. Mine as well. Like it feels amazing when you have somebody who's really into it and they're rubbing those temples. So my sister just started getting into learning about essential oils and how the different flavors of oils do different things. So if you want to step it up a little bit, get like a peppermint oil if they're coming in in the morning and they want to be invigorated and woken up. If it's an evening appointment, get like a lavender or something soothing, something that would make them more sleepy. So just little tiny vials, you can buy them at Marshalls. I've seen them in Marshalls a million times. There's like a pack of four. Just put them at your shampoo station, put a couple drops on your fingers, give them that little massage kind of rub right here. Feels really good right above the brows. Just kind of push that way, the back of their neck. Everybody holds their tension right here in the back of their neck you will see a major difference in referrals, in your client loyalty, they will love it. One small, simple change. Dry hair, oil massage, aromatherapy. Number four, I am like a total freak about. I hate when I go to a business or even to a friend's house and someone tries to hand me coffee in a styrofoam cup. It's like against my religion. I am a coffee fiend, I love my coffee. And I am really insulted when someone hands me styrofoam. There's just no reason for it. Like it, it feels horrible. It gives me the chills when I touch it. If I move my finger on it, it makes that noise. It just doesn't feel good. Like I, this talk is called coffee and colorful conversations. My coffee is my life. This is my biggest addiction. I could, it could be worse, right? So having a beautiful presentation in the salon for coffee is not expensive. My mugs are Nicole Miller mugs from Marshalls. I think it cost me $10 for four of them and I got two boxes. So eight mugs and a, we have a dishwasher. They're beautiful, just a bone colored, you know, upscale look. They look like something you would drink out of at the Four Seasons, but they're Nicole Miller from Marshalls. They match the aesthetic of the salon and it's nice for the client to have an actual moment with their coffee, to be able to hold a mug and feel the heat of the coffee and enjoy it. And then we don't just serve regular coffee. The trend right now is artisan drinks, Starbucks. Everybody gets excited when they get a Starbucks coffee versus their coffee pot at home. So why would you serve them what they already have at home? They don't want stale burnt coffee that you made at 9 a.m. at their three o'clock appointment. I get it, we're hairdressers, we're not baristas, we're not gonna be monitoring the coffee pot. So it sits and it becomes thick and strong and gross and it takes 30 seconds to brew a fresh pot. A lot of salons have started to use the Keurig. I'm not a fan of the Keurig, I don't know, I just feel like it doesn't, it's not my kind of coffee, I guess, that they use in there, it doesn't get hot enough. I just don't love it, but if it's working for you and your clients, love it, great. We stepped it up and we got a Nespresso, N-E-S-P-R-E-S-S-O, -E -S -S Nespresso machine. The first time I bought it was 15 years ago. It cost me like $800 for this coffee machine. But because I'm a coffee fiend and I know that's important, we attracted a really upscale clientele 
because they want a nice cup of coffee or a latte or a mocha, whatever. And we literally go to Starbucks, we walk in and we say, I need a bottle of vanilla, I need a bottle of caramel, I need a bottle of hazelnut. Starbucks sells you all of their liquid syrups. So we buy them from Starbucks and then we have cinnamon and little chocolate flakes and little things that are no big deal. You can get them on Starbucks online if you don't want to go to the Starbucks store. But we always have them. At Christmas time, we have gingerbread. We have toffee nut. We have pumpkin spice. Like every, when, when people walk in and we say, can I get you a beverage? And they're like, oh, a glass of water. And I'm like, are you sure? We have all the, all the cappuccinos and, and lattes from Starbucks. And they're like, oh, can I get a uh, non-fat pumpkin spice? Like they rattle off their drink. And it's really simple. You push a button on the Nespresso. It pours the shot. You add the syrup and you fr we have a little frother that was $100. It's easy. Plugs in, you push the button, it froths, put it in there, sprinkle cinnamon, and they have a beautiful drink and they appreciate it. And they sit and sip it and some of them will have another one. And most people will say when they get it in their hand, oh, I have been looking forward to this all day. Did they say they've been looking forward to getting their hair done all day? No, they look forward to the coffee and to the smiling face greeting them when they come in. If that smiling face isn't there, they're going to be disappointed. Don't just take for granted when someone is a regular <clears throat> and not join them and greet them when they come to the door. You have to get up and look out and say, hey, how are you? Nice to see you. I'll be with you in a minute. Just recognize that they're there. Let them know that they're seen and go on with what you're doing. So that was the Starbucks, the mug, the syrups, all easy, easy. I now live in Florida, so I don't have to worry about this, but in PA, we have some really damn cold winters, and you have a menopausal colorist with hot lights on my head working all day, blow dryers in the salon going, so us, as the service providers, we're hot, and we feel like it's warm in the salon. Clients coming in from sub-zero temperatures coming in there are like, oh my gosh, hey Cheryl, Oh my gosh, it is so damn cold in here. Are you guys crazy? They're sitting with wet color on their hair. It's drafty for them. They're not moving around the way that we are. So it was a battle because if I made it cooler, um, we were comfortable. The clients were uncomfortable. If I made it warmer, the stylists were like dripping in sweat and just like running on empty because they were hot and uncomfortable. So again, home goods. Went to Home Goods, bought a really fun ombre blanket. It's the coziest, comfiest. It's like that blanket that you can't wait to get under at night and watch a movie. It was $20. I roll it up and I put it in the basket where we have our client robes. So now we know, <clears throat> excuse me, which clients run hot and which ones run cold. So the hot ones get the lightest weight client robes to, to change into and they're super comfortable. And then I bought this other big fluffy robe again at Marshall's, a black fluffy, fluffy robe. We call it the Hugh Hefner robe from Playboy. Um, and we have one of them because not everybody wants to put on a bathrobe when they get their hair done. But we have women that are 90 pounds soaking wet. They haven't eaten since their third grade, you know, party. Um, they watch all their carbs. They're super thin and they're always cold. As soon as they come in, I'm like, do you want the Hugh Hefner robe? And they're like, yes, please. And they love it. So it's a simple detail. It was a $25 puffy robe from Marshalls. We have a washing machine. We wash it just like we wash the capes. No big deal, but they love it. Simple, simple changes. The blanket, some people don't want something all the way up here, but they're, for me, their legs get cold. So they're like, oh, my legs are freezing, but everything else feels good. We lay that blanket over their lap and they put their book on top or their phone or whatever, and they have a comfy, cozy blanket across their lap. Simple, simple, simple. So while we're on that topic, something that I introduced recently to the salon before I even left, my daughter started doing it after Christmas, was one of those microwavable aromatherapy neck wraps. That has gone over really well. We have a little sign in our waiting area that says, ask about an aromatherapy neck wrap. So again, everybody holds their tension in their neck. So this thing was I want to say $39 or something. I, you know, there's like three of them that are on rotation and you put it in the microwave, make it nice and hot. And when the client's sitting there with their retouch on, 
just put a paper towel, you know, before it so you don't get color all over it, and then lay it right on top and let it sit on their neck and shoulders while they're processing. They're sitting there anyway. Now they're getting a little heated neck massage and releasing that tension. They love it. Easy, simple thing to up your game. Um, the next thing is phone chargers. It's such a simple thing, but I was visiting my friend's salon and I was shadowing him for the day and he's a hair color genius. I love him to death. I finally talked him into having an interview with me and I can't wait. I'm going to be interviewing him about all his little things that I've learned from him over the years that have really made big changes for me. And something that I noticed was every single um, station while people are getting their color done has two chargers hidden behind the mirror, one for an Android and one for an Apple. So clients always come to us panicking that their phone is on like 20% and they're in an absolute panic. And we would have to take their phone and use the single one charger that we have in the entire salon, take their phone away from them in order to charge it for them so they have it for their ride home. And you know, guys, how popular everybody's phones are and they feel panicked when they don't have them. They would be very uncomfortable and they would just keep looking, keep looking to make sure that nobody was looking at their phone because, you know, you get messages that pop up and a picture can pop up. And in my case, in my phone, you never know what the heck's going to pop up and embarrass me. But having phone chargers, so simple. Go on Amazon, order a dozen of them. It won't cost you more than $25 and just have them readily available and have the clients know where to find them. Have a designated junk drawer. If you can't put one at every station, just have a designated junk drawer where the client knows they can help themselves to chargers. Um, recognizing your client's birthday. I started doing this, I opened my first salon when I was 22 years old and I was smarter and more simple and basic then and so, so successful accidentally doing the things that I did when I was 22. I didn't have a business consultant. I didn't go to any classes on how to run a salon. I just knew I loved doing hair, I loved people, and I wanted them to want to come to me. So I just always did extra things. So a client comes for the first time, as soon as they would leave that night, I would go home and I would have little, again, Marshalls, $5, little packs of cute thank you cards. Now I have branded thank you cards because I've overcomplicated it because that's what you do the longer you're in the industry. But back then, I got a simple blank note card that I could write a personal note. And I said, hey, you know, hi, Cindy. It was so nice meeting you today and taking care of your hair. I really hope you love it as much as I did. If you have any issues styling it or if you have any questions that pop up, please feel free to reach out to me at any time. I look forward to seeing you again in six weeks, seven weeks, eight weeks, whatever it is that you recommend. This was not only special where they're getting this nice thank you note in the mail, because as you and I know, all we ever get is bills and bad news in the mail. We never get a fun, happy thank you. I love writing personal notes, even in 2019, even more so in 2019, because nobody does it. Simple thank you note, that client looks at it and says, oh my gosh, that was really nice. They remember that they liked the visit. It's a reminder of they liked you because it's going to come in a couple days. Even if you write it out the same day, by the time it goes through the mail, it's a couple days later. Even if you do it a week later, as long as you're doing that second touch point and reminding them of who you are, include your business card, include an offer. You could slide something in there like, hey, this is you know a $10 voucher. I noticed that you didn't get color today. Here's a $10 voucher. I'd love to do your color next time. Simple, simple, simple. Their birthday, when someone comes to you, now you guys are spoiled because Salon Software asks for all that stuff. I had a little plastic, you know, from Office Max filing thing with the A, B, C, D to Z with index cards. And each client that would come in, I would say Elaine Travis, address, date of birth, color formula, any details on the card. But I always ask for their date of birth. So my dinosaur, again, don't blame your owner. If you say, I don't have access to that information. My boss doesn't let me have that. Come on, guys. It's Facebook time. It's Instagram time. You know you have a way to reach out to your clients. So just getting their date of birth, and even if you have to do the dinosaur index card method, just have a way of tracking when their birthdays are. And then if you don't have their address and your owner doesn't give you access to that, that's fine. Just 
find them on social media and shoot them a happy birthday text at the minimal. But if you can get their address, it's really nice to send an actual birthday card. I used to do postcards because postcards are cheaper postage. So I would just do a postcard. It already says on there, happy birthday with the logo of the salon. And then the back is blank and I say, hey Jill, happy birthday, thinking of you on your special day. Can't wait to see you for your next appointment. It's just another touch point that not everybody's doing. People really appreciate it. I know I really appreciate when people make a big deal out of my birthday and it just makes you feel special. It's your one day that's just for you and nobody else and it's nice. So that's an easy thing to do to make you stand out from other people that have not done that for them. Um, processing. Um, a lot of people are still using a lot, a lot of heat in the salon. And I know for myself, I used to be a contact wearer and I dread it when I got my foils, I always dread it that I had to sit under a hot dryer because the, the air would blow and burn the hell out of my eyes. My contacts were like shriveled raisins in my eyeballs. It felt like I was blinking on glass when I was done. And it was so, so uncomfortable. My cheeks would get really hot. And again, I talked about being in menopause. A lot of women are in that peri and menopausal state where adding any heat whatsoever is like torture for them. But we don't realize it. We're usually 20 years younger than them and we're not hot and we're hot. We're hot looking because we're in our 20s. And we don't know that that client is roasting and miserable under that heat. So I stopped using heat with my highlights and my dimensional work with clay light and all that. I stopped using it. I felt like the hair was just getting too compromised. Um, what I will do now if I need to speed up an area is I'll put a diffuser on a blow dryer and I hold it really high off of the head like this high and kind of just move it around. Like if this is the last section that I do and it just needs just a little bit more heat, I'll do this and I'll create a rollerball effect with a diffuser and make sure you have the diffuser on it. You want to diffuse that blast of air and heat and just hold it. Don't be doing it right down here because that's as bad as putting them under heat. So back 15 years ago when I opened my second location, I invested in a rollerball from Takara Belmont. It was like $6,000. It was something ridiculously outrageous, but it was worth every penny because it moved around the client's head. There was no heat or there was no wind. There was no drying out of the contacts. It was great. So that made a difference. Not everybody can invest in a rollerball. So they end up using the hood dryer or those French fry um, lights that are super hot. Like they come around with all those arms. It's not comfortable. So switch it up. Try the diffuser thing. If you're busy doing another client, you can have an assistant do it. And what's nice about it is I teach my bullshit balayage technique and I have another brand new technique I'm so excited about called texture lights. Putting texture and that Victoria's Secret look into the hair. And when you do these texture lights, you're floating the color way far away from the scalp. So you have these butterfly packets swinging around on the bottom of their head. Hey, Destiny, welcome. Um, and they're not getting the heat of the scalp. So it's nice about even the rollerball can't get exactly on that packet. So what's nice about the diffuser and the dryer is I can go exact, like I can open up a foil, look at it and be like, oh wow, that really needs extra time and go back in and put that diffuser right on that floating packet and not put it up to the root foils where I'm already getting that heat of the scalp. So that was a huge one. I hope you guys have Put in the comments, oh my gosh, if you love that tip, because that's how much I loved it. Just put OMG or awesome, love it. Just give me some comment love um, so that I know that you're listening and that you got something from that tip. Um, my last one is we started implementing a service we call Express Checkout. So when I remodeled my salon, I was like, the front desk of the salon, unfortunately, is can sometimes be the hub of drama. So much drama happens at that front desk. The person who works the front desk is behind there doing their best. They're answering the phone. They're making sure appointments are done properly. They're getting guests, beverages, 
they're getting up, they're taking them back to the shampoo area. It's a crazy important position. Unfortunately, it doesn't always pay the most money and it's hard for that person to make that into a career. So they're doing their best trying to be everything that we want and need them to be. And then the hairdressers are constantly, our desk used to be where it was the typical front desk that comes up to here and the person, all you see is their floating head. And the hairdressers were constantly coming around behind and doing this and looking at the book. This was before we had online booking and the, the stylists have their schedule on their phone. They didn't have it and it drove them nuts. They wanted to know what was on that paper book. So they were constantly like interface, looking, looking, looking. And then they're like, you didn't do this right. I need to see her. She's, she runs late. So I need to squeeze somebody in there and they're yelling at the front desk person. And they're just like, Oh my gosh, I'm making $8 an hour. Are you kidding me? Like you're crazy. You're making 50, 60,000 and tips and I'm making $8 and you're screaming at me. Like this is my lifelong, you know, purpose in life. I just want to get through college and I need some extra money to buy Starbucks. That's what they're thinking. So I started having meetings. The next person I see behind that desk, you're getting sent home for the day and you're not going to get paid. And I had all these, not, you know, hardcore rules that I was like, I'm determined to undo this drama at the desk. Nothing ever worked. I had a camera that used to be facing the desk. And if I wasn't at the salon, I would pop on and look. And where was everybody when mommy wasn't there? Behind the desk. So it was like they would do what they were supposed to do when I was there, but not when I wasn't there. So I was like, okay, this is never going away. Like I need to be like, um, more like a dog trainer or like a preschool teacher. Like I have to take away the option of doing the behavior because the behavior is never changing. Like there's nothing I can do to change this. So when I remodeled, I said, you know what? No front desk. That's it. I'm not having one. You don't need one. We have all this modern technology. We have iPads that <clears throat> are in the back color room where we can look up formulas. We can change the ticket. We can do everything we need from the iPad, check the schedule, all that. Each stylist has their own individual phone. They can go on and look at their schedule. They can change the ticket. They can look at the totals. They can do everything from their phone. So when I remodeled, I put a beautiful, it's like a dining room buffet table where it's in the middle of the hub of the busyness of the salon. So then I was like, okay, this is going to be awkward because clients are going to be like, where do I go to pay? And it was awkward in the beginning, but I'm so happy that I did it and it worked so well. So I said to the client, each new client that came in after the remodel, I would say, I know it felt weird when you came in here because now you come in and it's like you're coming into somebody's living room. There's a beautiful velvet couch. There's the cappuccino machine. There's a mini fridge. Like people come in and they're like, did I come in the back door or did I walk into somebody's house? It's a little off-putting at first, but then when they're there and they get the flow and they get that there's not five people. Think about what a client feels like when they walk into a salon and there's five people hovered at the desk and they all look up and just check them out up and down like they're not cool enough to be here. I've had that happen so many times I can't even tell you and it sucks. It's really uncomfortable. You feel like you interrupted a funny story. Like they'll be laughing and you're like, are they laughing at me? But really they were just talking about some other client and making fun of them, unfortunately, and you happen to walk up. But it's just super unnecessary and uncomfortable and very unprofessional. And I think when it's your home, like we all look at our salon as our second home and we're so comfortable there. So we don't realize that when people walk in and we're all hovered together laughing, we think it looks like, oh, look, these people really like each other. That's so nice. They all work together and they're having fun. No, they're like, what is going on and why don't these people have any clients? Why are they not busier? Should I leave? Like, are they not going to do a good job on my hair? Because why do they have so much downtime to talk shit on the last client and to hover and gossip? So there's just nothing good happening with the huddle at the front desk and people do not belong there unless they work the front desk, period. So what we did was we introduced express checkout. Um, some people, my mother, people that aren't super um, comfortable giving out their credit card online, there's a lot of people that are like, oh, I'm afraid, I don't want to put it online because my number is going to be stolen. You're still going to have those people. So for the people that don't want to give their numbers, 
we have somebody walk up to them when they're like 98% done. Their hair is styled, they're smiling, the appointment's being wrapped up. We have someone walk up and say, um, I'm going to get you started with checking you out so you don't have to leave your chair. Can I get you anything? Do you need any product? Um, you know, they don't have to then take another step, walk up to the retail shelves and have that glazed look over their face like, I know I need something and I know she just used four different things on me, but I don't know what she used and I don't know if I need it or not. That person who's checking them out can say, can I help you with any shampoo, styling products, anything you need to take home? Oh, thank you. I did want to bring home that Be Confident hairspray. I, I'm out of that. Can you grab that for me? So the person grabs the hairspray. They, they go over to that beautiful table. They're standing right next to the client. They didn't go in some back room that's a mystery. Um, they check them out right there. They scan the hairspray. They get their total. They ring it out. They bring the slip over. They hand it to the client on a little clipboard so that they have something to lean on to sign it. They sign their little slip. And they say, I'd love to get your next appointment set up for you. You normally come. They look in the history and they're like, you usually come five weeks. Today's Wednesday. Is that normally a good day for you? Not, would you like to come in five weeks? It's, you come every five weeks. Today's a Wednesday. Is Wednesday usually good? I'm going to get your next one set up. I'm going to get your next one set up. Not, would you like to book? When you give somebody the option of a yes or no, they're always going to say no. Because once that cape comes off, it's like a knee-jerk reaction. When that rip of the Velcro happens and the cape comes down, they're done. Their kid is texting them 27 times that, should they order pizza? I'm starving. Are you coming home? Where's my dinner? Their husband's at them. Their work is at them saying, you didn't hand in that last minute report. Can you email that to me? They're completely checked out and on to the hell that they're going home to. So if you miss that window while they're sitting in the chair all comfortable, they still have their beautiful Nicole Miller mug and they're sipping their remainder of their cappuccino and they're feeling so loved and so attended to, they're going to say, Wednesday sounds great. I usually come at 7. That's awesome. And then you get them pre-booked. And then we take it a step further and we say, I'm going to do the next two appointments and you don't have to say and, and let me figure this out. I'm going to email them to you. And then we set up the next two appointments every five or six weeks, whatever it is. And then we email them the appointments and then they have them. And then we have online booking. So they know that if something that we set up doesn't work, they can click a couple buttons and change it easily. Easy peasy. So those are my 10 favorites. I'm going to take a peek and see if anybody asked any questions. Let me go back. Hello, Instagram. Thank you for watching me sideways. Um, people just saying hello, 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 Maryland, Michelle from Maryland, Aaron, hey Aaron, we had a great chat yesterday, I loved it, hi Ronnie, hi Ren, hi Donna, two Donnas in a row, hi Donna, I'm Donna, hi Sandy, hi Lisa, hi Jeanette, Jeanette is in Ohio, Lisa is in Chicago, Leslie in Orlando, Leslie, we have to get together, I'm right in uh, St. Pete Beach, Kim, Dry thumbs. Kim tried the dry thumbs and is saying it works. I trust me, guys. I've never had a stain. So everybody's just saying hello. Scrubbing my dry thumb on the hairline is the best tip I've ever gotten in my career. Works like a charm. I learned many great tips and ideas from your videos. So many aha uh -huh moments from you. Thank you for doing what you do. I just got your book too. Can't wait to read it. Thank you, Katie. That is also sweet. I love hearing that. I love. If you guys have not checked out my book, please do. Everybody gets a lot of great little tips that you wouldn't have thought of. Lisa is asking where in Florida. I'm in St. Pete Beach. Carlene from Chicago. Nina from beautiful California. And everybody, great idea. Oh, my God. Thank you. This is how my students, yes, yeah, students hover around the, and they're, they're learning bad right from the beginning to hover around the desk. Um, so basically everybody's just saying, yes, I hate that about the desk. What is with my bangs today? I have clean hair and my bangs look like they're, have Western oil in them and they're driving me crazy, but sorry for continuing to play with them. So as usual, guys, I went long, so I will let you go. Enjoy your coffee. Enjoy your Wednesday. Thanks for joining. Please check out any and all of my online offerings. Um, I do little mini online courses and then a full comprehensive two 
actually three online comprehensive courses, depending on where you are in your career. So DM me, reach out, follow me on Instagram, follow the coffee chat, stay in touch. And I am happy to be here, always sharing my passion and love for hair color and anything that I learn, I pass on to you guys. So stay tuned for the texture light um, technique. I will be doing that. I'm going to be working on some doll heads today, perfecting my texture light technique before I share it with all of you. So gotta go. Thank you for joining and have a wonderful, wonderful, colorful Wednesday.